While historically the geocentric model, that is the Earth-centered model of the heavens, was around first and lasted a long time, it was in the 16th century that a man named Nicholas Copernicus decided that the system developed by Ptolemy and modified over the years with epicycle upon epicycle and strange looping motions of planets was not satisfying. And he proposed an alternate hypothesis. He said, what if instead of Earth being at the center, the Sun was at the center? and that the planets, including the Earth, orbit around the Sun. And so Sun-centered would be heliocentric. Helios is Greek for the Sun. So heliocentric is Sun-centered. And he was able to work out the order of the planets in this system. And in the diagram, you see we have the Sun at the center, then Mercury, Venus, Earth, where now the only thing orbiting around the Earth is our Moon, then Mars, and Jupiter, and Saturn. And notice it stops at Saturn and that is because uh, these are the only planets visible to the naked eye. And during the time of Copernicus, uh, the telescope had not yet been invented. So these were the known planets. And then beyond the orbit of Saturn, uh, he envisioned uh, a field of stars out in the heavens. And one of the key ideas in the heliocentric model is that planets closer to the Sun move faster than planets farther away. So in our system here Mercury is going to be moving the very fastest, followed by Venus, then Earth, then Mars, then Jupiter, and then Saturn. And the reason why this is important is because this is going to be key to explaining retrograde motion. Now recall that retrograde motion is where planets appear to move backwards. Now in the system we see that all our planets are orbiting in the same direction and we are very northern hemisphere biased so we picture uh, going off of Earth's North Pole and looking down on the solar system and from that perspective uh, all the planets are orbiting counterclockwise around the Sun. So if they're moving all in one direction, how could they possibly move backwards in the sky? And what Copernicus worked out is if we move faster than another planet, for example, down here on the lower diagram, Earth being closer to the Sun moves faster than Mars, then as we pass Mars, we are going to get the illusion of backwards motion. And what these diagram is showing is the position of the Earth, uh, let's say once every few weeks, and same for Mars. Because Earth is closer and moving faster, the positions are going to be farther apart in that same period of time. Mars moving slower is going to cover a smaller distance. 
So if you connect Earth's position to the position of Mars, then that projects out to where we would see Mars in the night sky. So if we numbered these positions, and then numbered where we see it in the night sky, I don't know how small I can write on here, We see that for positions 1, 2, and 3, Mars is appearing to move forward. So that's our prograde motion. But then for positions 4 and 5, 3 through 5 really, right in here, that is our retrograde motion. So notice on the diagram, 3 through 5, and 3 through 5, is where Earth is moving past Mars and getting ahead of it. So as we pass Mars, or any slower moving planet, it appears to move backwards. But is not literally moving backwards. As you can see, for Mars, it is still moving in the same direction. But because it is moving slower, from our perspective, it looks like it's going backwards. Very similar to you know, on the highway passing a slower moving car. If you look out your window at the car you're passing, it looks like that car is moving backwards, even though you know they are not in reverse. So the same thing happens with the planets. When you're on a faster moving planet, all the ones farther away from the sun than you, so for us, that's going to be Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and not shown on here is Uranus and Neptune. Because they move slower than we do, every time we pass them in our orbit, we will see them exhibit retrograde motion.